In today's getting started video, we're going to go over the general overview of the Fidal control. Stay tuned. At first glance, you can see that we have the screen here, we have some knobs and switches over on the left hand side, and then we have the keypad right here. Starting up at the top left, you can see that we have the power button or the power light um, for the control. Mine actually doesn't work, but that's where it would turn on. Uh, right next to that, you can see there's a key switch. That's to allow you to lock the controller. If, if you're in a larger shop, besides me, I'm a, I'm a one man man, so I don't have to worry about this, but you could use that to lock the programs to where you, you can or cannot edit it. If it's in the vertical position like this, you can edit programs and modify things, but if it's in the horizontal position, uh, you could lock out you know, an operator if you don't want to allow them to change any uh, parameters or settings in the machine. But for me, I just leave it in the vertical position because, again, I'm just a, my own guy, my own shop. That's, you know, just me in here. Right below that, you have the load meter for the spindle. This is the, the amperage draw uh, for the spindle when it's, when it's cutting through whatever material that you're cutting. This just shows you, you know, how, how aggressive it is. And so you can use that to help manage your, your tool life or your program, whatever it is that uh, you, you want to uh, modify monitor. Right below that we have three switches. We have the optional stop, we got the light on and off, and we have the video on and off. Starting over on the video, this basically controls this screen being on and off. If, if I turn it off, you can see that there's no more screen here. So that's that's more, more or less an, an easy switch um, to, to know what it does. The light on and off, that if, I don't know if you guys can see it. Yeah, you can see it over on the side of the camera. That turns the light on and off in the machine. Um, if you want it on and off, you can uh, turn it on and off. And then the last one is the optional stop. This corresponds with M1 commands that are in your program. If you have this on, and if we go over to another screen, you can see that the optional stop here, it can turn on and off. You can see it's turning on and off. So if it's on and you have an M1 in your program, it'll stop and wait for you to push the start button. You get start button here and you got a start button down there. One caveat with that, and one thing you want to know is in your program, if you're to do that for say uh, tool changes or something else, and you don't have the spindle on command or the coolant command um, on after that, and they need to be on, you manually have to turn that on um, before it starts moving along because then it, it won't turn on and uh, you'll have some problems there. Um, but if it's off, you can just, it'll just go through, if say it's an automatic tool change, it'll just change tools and you won't have to worry about manually uh, changing stuff. I recently had this on because my ATC was not working and I had to manually change programs or uh, tools. Um, but now that I got all that fixed, I don't really have to have this on. Uh, right below that, you got the emergency stop button. This is your oh crap button. So when things go awry in the in the program or in the machine for whatever reason, you just slam your hand on that, and things will stop. Or at least they should be, or should stop. Uh, next to that, you got the rapid travel. So you got three knobs right here. Um, this is for the rapid travel. So your G zero moves. So between cutting moves. You know, going up and over to a different pocket, say, and then you're going to go down and machine. Um, that controls that speed. You got 25, 50, and 100%. Down to the bottom left, you got the feed rate. This is for all your G1 moves. So when you're machining, you're going around, say, a contour, or just, just machining in general, this is your feed rate overrides, where you could go down to zero, and you can go all the way up to 150%. Uh, next to that, you similar to this, but for the spindle, you can control your spindle override to where you can go to 100%, of course, all the way down to zero, or all the way up to 200% of the commanded spindle um, RPM. Right below that, this, these are the controls that you'd use for jogging the machine. You have this selector knob. You can see it X, Y, Z, A, B, C. 
Um, typical machines, or in general, you'll have X, Y, Z, and then if you have the options with extra cards in your Fidal, you could control your A, B, C, which is your rotary axes. Next to that is actually your, your step over amount or your step um, for when you're controlling this. So when you're using the MPG, one click, you can, you can control how far it jumps. So this is 10 thou, 1 thou, and 1 tenth increments. Below here is your uh, increments, uh, your MPG, so you can control it and just you know jog up and down or left, right, whatever. And right below that, you got the start button and then the slide hold. So this slide hold is the same as this one, but basically during a, a program, if you were to push that, it's just gonna stop and like it says, it's going to hold until you say, okay, start again or keep going. If we move over to the controls here, you of course got the start and hold buttons. These are the same as these. And then you got the auto, well, actually I'm already in the auto screen. So it's, it's uh, um, yelling at me. Going to the next button is the manual. This is where you can manually put in controls and then go next to that and you see the single step button. This allows you to, to step through the program one line at a time. You got the jog button. This will allow you to jog the machine. You can see it's up here, it says jog. You can now then use these controls and jog the machine in whatever orientation that you want. The spindle on and off button, that as it states is for on and off. You can always turn the spindle off with this button, but if you want to turn it on manually, you got to push the shift button, hold it, and push this. And I'll do it real quick. You can hear the spindle just turned on. It's going pretty slow right now. I think it's only going a few hundred, oh, you can see up here, 1,000 RPM. And then if I push it again, it turns off. So moving down below this, this will allow you to control the ATC, assuming you have one on your machine. I think all all files I've seen have an ATC. I don't know if I've seen one without it. But you can control your turret to go either clockwise or counterclockwise. Um, tool in and out, this, just like it says, is uh, will allow you to manually put the, a tool into the spindle head and out. Uh, coolant one and two, these correspond to the, on the back side of your machine, you should have two plugs, one that says coolant one and one that says coolant two. Well, these basically correspond to those plugs, supplies power to them. And for me, coolant one is my actual coolant, you know, my uh, oil and water mixture. And then coolant two for me is my mist collector. Uh, normally, you, you could have, say, a, a solenoid or something else connected to this if you had a fog buster or some other coolant method that you want to use, or even just some other uh, 120 out, but I, th I think it's 120. It, I, I could be wrong with that, but you could configure these because um, they're really just sockets on the back of the machine that you can plug uh, components into. And then below here, you have your typical keyboard. Uh, one, two, three, four, all the way up to zero. Same stuff that you normally see on a keyboard. Uh, one thing to note is how these are used. And it, um, if you go go to here, we'll do MU, the manual command. Um, if you want to know more about the, the details on a machine, just type MU when you're in the, this manual. When you see this enter next command, you type MU, you'll get to this screen. So I'll do it again. And now you can see that you have all these options that you can go look into, whether it's, you know, backlash or cold start, fixture offsets, you have all these things that you can look into. And all you have to do is type, you know, this page number, say, you know, let's go to the messages. We'll go to 47, enter. And so you see, I have a few of these faults right here. Um, this is for the messages. This is actually because I was trying to move stuff before without my, uh, stop off. So if we go back to the menu command, you can see down here on any of the pages that you see, um, you can use the backspace and the enter 
keys to maneuver around. So let's just go somewhere in the middle. Let's go to 16. So you can see here, this is the page for new program and number of program blocks. This just tells you the details of that. And you can use the backspace button to go back and an enter button to go forward. And then if you, I don't think, oh, on, on this page you don't have to, you, you can't use the space bar, but if you're in the manual command, you can use the space bar and jog between different pages. So you enter next command, you push space bar for the next menu, and you can see all of these um, custom macro that is helpful in the future. We'll have a future video on uh, tool offsets that this is actually really helpful. And then you can edit stuff. I don't normally use any of those. I really just use um, the custom macro and the enter next command if I want to do you know random commands for either bringing in a program or turn things on and off whatever so hope they hopefully that's that's a helpful guide to the foot all control if you have any questions feel free to type them below if I miss something or if you have more questions on what I went over let me know you know we're going through this getting started series I want to be able to help document all the questionable stuff or the things that I always had a, a curiosity on on Fidals before I bought my Fidal I I had a level of concern of not being able to know what this control is or what it does because me I'm used to newer controls um, that are only a few years old and this this control is you know this was this machine was rebuilt in 2001 but this is from the, the 90s and so, of course, it's, it's a little bit different screen. You got almost like that, that DOS look on here. So, yeah, guys, if, if this video deserved it, please give it a like. If, it, if this content warrants it, please feel free to subscribe if you like this kind of content. I'll be doing a few more of these videos and uh, other stuff, just not just getting started for foot alls, but for other stuff that I'm working on and that help, hopefully will be helpful for you guys. So... Hope you guys enjoyed. Hope you guys learned something like I did. And uh, I'll see you guys in the next one. See ya.